Hello, 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 my friends. Good morning and welcome to Wow Wednesday. Woo! <laughs> I am Nancy Matthews, one of the founders of Women's Prosperity Network, and it's a pleasure to have you with us today for our weekly midweek boost of motivation, education, and inspiration, where we feature today's thought leaders and business leaders giving you practical tools and strategies to live your best life, to grow your business, and to spread more love, kindness, and happiness. That's what this is all about. So we're glad that you're here with us today. I'll be bringing on our guest, Dr. Donna Smith, in just a few minutes. I uh, want to share some Women's Prosperity Network announcements. First of all, kudos to all of our um, gold and platinum members who joined us yesterday for the members only session. There were collaborations, brainstorms, brilliant ideas happening um, within this community. And I will say, if you are not a member and you happen to be tuning in right now, what you waiting for? You can join for free. Go to our website, womensprosperitynetwork.com. Join us. We need more extraordinary women and some really great men too, joining our community so that together we can all make the positive difference that we're here to make and support one another. So thank you for everyone for showing up yesterday and to all of those new members who are going to join in after seeing this show. Next up, we've got on the third Tuesday of the month, we have our uh, Networking with a Twist, which is an opportunity for you to join us, connect, collaborate. We put you in breakout sessions so you can build deep connections. No more just chatting. Here's my stuff. Go buy my stuff. And we're going to talk about sales today. Uh, you'll get the opportunity to develop relationships, build those connections and trust for people doing business with people they know know, like, and trust. So we're really delighted to have you with us. And then we also have our monthly mastermind, which is going to take place on the third Saturday, I'm sorry, Thanksgiving weekend. So join us on Thanksgiving weekend, Saturday morning for our brilliance, brainstorming, and breakthroughs. Today, we're going to go for about 30 minutes with our guest pouring into us when it comes to really how do you get paid now instead of eventually when you're in those sales conversations and people go, oh, I'll think about it, or you're just on a wait and see mode? No, we want to run our businesses in a smooth, streamlined way and have really great conversations. And Dr. Donna Smith Bellinger is an expert in that. Uh, so we'll go for about 30 minutes, then we'll open up for question and answer. So let me share with you a little bit about our guest today. So, Dr. Donna, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us today. Oops, I lost you. You're muted. Okay, I was just saying, my pleasure to be here, Nancy. Thank you so much. It is a delight to have you with us. And I'm just going to share that you and I met through LinkedIn, is my recollection of how we met. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working... Um, with my LinkedIn profile, creating relationships, reaching out to people that seem like good collaboration partners. And that's how it all started. Uh, Dr. Donna is also part of the faculty for the People Skills Academy. She's a uh, member of Women's Prosperity Network, and she is just brilliant on many things. Today, we're just going to get a slice on this expertise around sales. Uh, so I'm so glad that you're here. And I mentioned how we met because I want to really encourage all of you to stay the course with the actions that you're taking to meet and connect with people because it's about building those relationships. Um, Dr. Donna Smith Bellinger is the CEO of DS Bellinger Consulting and has enjoyed more than 40 years in corporate leadership experience. She is the strategic, no-nonsense sales consultant who's committed to driving results for her clients. Having worked in both corporate and entrepreneurial sectors, Donna is familiar with both worlds and well-versed in the challenges that affect each of those sectors, uh, as well as how to overcome them. She is engaging, humorous, and unfiltered, and her ability to relate to prospects in both sectors and speak their language has made her successful as a sales professional. And that's the secret that she teaches her clients and that she'll be sharing with us today. She simplifies the sales process and has her clients learn how to have better sales conversations, create more effective sales processes, all leading to closing more deals. So welcome, Dr. Donna. 
Thank you so very much, Nancy. Like I said, it's always a joy to be in your space. I feel the same way. All right. So I'm going to jump right in because we've got lots of people with us today who are very eager to close more deals, which means you're serving more people. And that's what really it is. It's all about. So let's kick it off with um, sales is not about wait and see. What do you mean by that? Okay. I can just give you the example and I will see the invisible heads nodding. Okay. <laughs> you go out and you have a conversation with a prospect. And when you come back and you're speaking to spouse, partner, manager, how did the meeting go? Well, we're just waiting for. Mm. <laughs> okay. And then whatever you fill in the blank with. But sales is not about that because you know, your car note's not going to wait, your mortgage is not going to wait, your light bill, your kids or whoever depends on you. They don't want that. And the reason that you wind up with the wait and see is because you did not properly pre-qualify that prospect before you offered them the opportunity for you to be of service to them. You're on mute, Nancy. My goodness, rookie mistake. <laughs> and here we are being perfectly imperfect. So um, repeat that statement. The reason that you get that wait and see after meeting with a prospect is because? You did not properly pre-qualify them. You know, you have to determine when it is the correct time to offer to be of service. I have a lot of people say, oh, I hate sales. Well, yeah, because nobody likes to be sold. But you are basically offering to be of service to that person to address a challenge or a pain that uh, that person verbalized to you. Yeah. And in the pre-qualifying that you're talking about here, it's having the conversation to have them self-identify that they need what you have, right? When I train my people uh, on pre-qualification and other aspects of developing their sales process, I say that you have had an effective conversation when that person says, how can we work together? Or I have someone I want you to meet. That's the desired outcome out of any conversation. Otherwise, they didn't grasp your value. Mm, and if they can't relate to your value, there's a challenge. Two things I want everybody to real dial in on that Dr. Donna just said. In that an effective conversation has one of two outcomes. How can I work with you? Or I've got somebody I want to introduce you to. Off, right. So so those are the two things we need to be listening for and creating relationship towards as opposed to I'm going into this conversation and they're going to buy from me. And, and then you come in too early with the offer and they want, oh, wait and see. They weren't ready. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. So what are some of the ways that we can get to that place in the conversation where they're saying one of those two things to us? Well, one of the things that you have to do in the pre-qualification uh, process is listen. All right. Uh, far too often we don't listen. We're waiting for our chance to speak. So while that person is speaking, you're trying to rehearse exactly how you're going to pitch them. And that is not going to help you. So when you start to get uh, things like we're already working with someone. I need to think about it. We already tried that. I need to talk to, you know, challenges on pricing or I'm not interested right now. You did not go through the necessary steps to pre-qualify that person. And those start with simple things like, well, what do you see as the challenge? And then listen to how they verbalize that because that'll tell you the language you need to use to respond to them. Are they talked in to you vision pictures? Are they talking to you bullet points? Are they really linear? Do you need to probe heavily in order to pull everything out of them? Everybody is different. And far too often, we want to force them into our type of conversation as opposed to honoring the way that they communicate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, in particular, if you're coming out of corporate and then you're going into your own thing, whether you're doing what you did in corporate or whether you have interest in something else, a different type of a talent that you have, you have to, as I said, learn to articulate the value of that particular thing. So what is the challenge? Well, the challenge is X. Really? How long have you had that challenge? Six months, six years, whatever. Okay, how is it affecting you? Is it affecting your health, your relationships, your productivity? You know, in other words, you want to nail on what it's costing them and have them in the space of what it's costing them. Then you follow that up with, well, what have you already tried? Mm, I love you, that question. You love have to find out, yeah, what they've already tried. Why? So you don't offer them what they already have in their mind determined doesn't work. And it's not that perhaps it didn't work. Maybe they had the wrong trainer. Maybe they had the wrong coach. Maybe they had the wrong product. Oh, I've already tried over-the-counter things. They don't work. Mm -hmm. You need to know how to wrap your solution into their listening. And then you want to get very, very clear. This is one of the most important questions. What would success around this area look like for you? What would you consider to be a successful outcome? And you want them to clearly articulate what success would look like. Because if they've never thought about it, now you need to make them think about it. Right. It's, it's not a commodity. Especially if it's a challenge that's persisted for a while, they may not even think success is possible anymore if they've tried a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And they may have uh, landed in what I call the land of settle. Well, I'm just going to settle for it because it's not going to change. I just got to live with it. Mm -hmm. Or depending on what the solution is that you're offering. Then comes my favorite part. I call it telling them a bedtime story. Here's where you tell them how you have helped someone in a mm -hmm. similar situation. Again, you tell them what you did, not how you did it. That is so important. Don't give them the recipe, all right? It, it's like when you go to a dinner and everything tastes really good and you take the things that really fit for you. They don't give you the recipe, they give you the dish, all right? Ooh. Are you hearing this? Like, show, <laughs> let's, let's get some love show in here because this is the gold of your success in having conversations that earn you more money. Um, give them, I love that. Tell them what you did, not how you did it. Give them the dish, not the recipe. I, I, I love that, Donna. Thank you. Okay, so... If you have had success in that particular uh, area, what you want to do then is say, all right, well, I had a person that I worked with for a week, a month, a year, however it is that you deliver your services, one of my courses. Um, and within that period of time, we were able to accomplish X. Mm -hmm. Is that the result you're looking for? Really good, really good. And, and just drop into it in a, in a way. So when you ask them, what does success look like for you? Or what, you know, what's the outcome you're hoping for? What will that be for you? And you ask them that question and give them the opportunity to future pace their desire, right? That's what, what you're doing there. I love it. Then you say, you know, that's really much like when I worked with, you know, um, Bobby and Bobby, you know, he had a lot of the similar challenges you just described to me. And we did this, this and this. And then here's what Bobby was able to do, like paint a, a concrete picture that allows them to see themselves in that role working with you. Love that. Mm -hmm. So you, I mean, and you would, you know, simply say, like one of my favorites is a mechanical engineer who felt that she was not being uh, honored on her job. She felt nobody heard her. She felt she was getting uh, passed over for specific things. And over the first eight months that she and I were working together, she became a leader in her area. She, in a time that they were not promoting or giving people uh, raises, 
we were able to increase her revenue by 33%. Is that the kind of result that you're looking for? Mm, beautiful. And then you sit back. And, and again, they're going to go, oh, how did you do that? Well, I worked with her privately. That's it. Yeah. You know, that's a nice way of saying, honey, I charge for that. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the other thing I see a lot. I hear uh, from a lot of people is I give them tips and advice. And then they say, you know, thanks. Uh, I don't need to hire you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, you want to show them what's possible. Mm -hmm. And and you may, on a, on a lower level, want to give them a few insights. Like when I have a quick conversation with people and we may talk for 15 or 20 minutes and they'll go, oh, Donna, that was so awesome. I can easily follow it up with, yeah, this is what I was able to give you in 15 minutes. Imagine if we worked together for three months. Ooh, another one. And 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 it's about listening because if which goes back to the very first thing you talked about here is if I wasn't really listening to hear you say, oh, wow, that's amazing. And I'm just focused on the next part of my sales script. You're going to miss that opportunity. Right. So during the process of a conversation, the prospects will give you clues as to their level level of readiness of working with you. And if all you're doing is going down the script and not keeping it as a dance between the two of you, you're going to end up with that. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Which yeah. Uh, I was hired a, a number of times by different organizations, a couple of universities here in Chicago and some studies that they did, uh, the Census Bureau. My specialty was what they called refusal conversion. People would say, I'm not participating. And I would be the one they would send in to get them to say yes. In what I do, I call it refusal aversion. You avoid having people give you that wait and see response by properly pre-qualifying. And you know what? As you're talking to them and listening carefully, they may not be a person you want to do business with, in which case they fall into one of the three care, uh, categories I love to talk about, which is you keep them, you toss them, or you donate them. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> so you keep them if they're a maybe, you toss them if you know what, they're never going to pay anybody anything. You know, they, they like it. That's what I usually say. Oh, you just like that. So I'm not going to play with you. Or you donate them to someone who can give them the result they're looking for, but they're just not your people. I you know, all that. money is not good money. I love that. Keep them, toss them, or donate them really good because we're not always the right fit and they still have a challenge even if I'm not the one to provide the, the service or product or whatever it is. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. How do you determine whether they're keep, keep them, toss them, or donate them? Because I'm glad I, you asked that. A lot of people just when they get and know they're like, okay, you know, feeling rejection, not good. And like, a, that's probably a second time I'm going to bring you back. We can talk about that aspect of it. But how do you decide, you know, what's the next step for someone if they don't immediately take action with you? Okay, there are two things, two parts to that answer. First, going back to the stories that you tell, mm -hmm. and I could feel some people going, yeah, but I don't have stories. So I have a thing that I do, I trademarked called Yestimonials. And a Yestimonial is a uh, recommendation or testimonial that contains what I call the money line, where someone would say, yes, I would pay for that particular result. Now, mm. once you acquire several of those, when I speak to my people, I tell them only use the stories that reflect your, your most successful, the, that reflect the people you loved to work with. Those are the ones that you want to focus on. Those are the ones that you share. And in that way, you're only attracting people that are your people, as mm -hmm. opposed to trying to be, I want to meet anybody who 
just introduce me to everybody you know who, because you don't like everybody and it's too time consuming to have everybody like you. All you want is your people. Right. right so right. when you when you zone in on what is going to, for me, and I'm sure for Nancy and a lot of you, I get up in the morning, I'm excited about the possibilities of the day. I'm not going, oh my God, I have to talk to this person or that person. So if you're only telling the stories, the bedtime stories, the, the success stories, the case studies, however you want to put it, for the relationships that hit you, then you know that, you know what, they still need it, but now I understand how they communicate. This person would be better for Nancy. This mm -hmm. person would be better for Susan. You know, and so you donate them to that person. What that does for you is still keep you top of mind because now you've become a trusted resource. And that's a clear delineation between you being a peddler and you being a professional. So good. So good. All right. I, I know that you are all taking very busy notes. If you can, if not, you can go back and listen to the replay. And uh, Dr. Don is going to give you the opportunity to have a conversation uh, both after uh, we finish up with this part. We're going to do some question and answer. So jot down those questions and then you'll also be able to set an appointment to have a consultation with her. She's so generous. Um, amazing, my friend. So can we talk about follow-up a little bit? Because that's an area where sales are lost all the time. And, and there are going to be times, so you want to do the pre-qual to cut down on the wait and see. Um, you want to do pre-qualifying, which is going to automatically increase the number of people who say yes when you're in that part of the conversation. And there will be times to follow up because sometimes it's just not the right timing. It's just not, you know, the, the budget isn't right. Or they do want to check with a spouse or a business partner or something like that before saying yes. Mm -hmm. So how do you recommend people do follow up? Because I was just talking with a client yesterday and she was sharing with me, you know, she's got a program coming up and she talked with people about it and they said, yeah, I want to do it. I, I need to talk to so-and-so or come back to me next week. And then she does follow up calls and they never, they avoid her, right? The ghost. <laughs> the ghost. Yeah, that's it. And we've all had that happen, myself included. So how do you gauge and build a follow-up system and process that works? The majority of us are doing uh, a lot of our business development and networking events. And you don't like to just pounce on people and go directly for the kill, so to speak. Um, and again, that is a subtlety that, you know, distinguishes you as a professional as opposed to a peddler, okay, who's always buy, 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 buy. So I have um, developed four types of follow-up calls. So if you don't write anything else down, please write these down. Okay, the first phone call that you can make, and these are all what I call no sales calls, is this is the follow-up to so glad to meet you at this particular event. I wanted to learn more about you or I found what you said intriguing or whatever. And so I call that the introduction call because I'm basically introducing myself to you. We share the space, but we don't really know each other. No. Then there is what I call the reintroduction call. And everybody has one of these little things, right? Okay, all of the people who are in there, you probably have a few hundred. The last time you spoke to them, time froze. You are exactly the person you were the last time they spoke to you. If you have new interests, if you have a new business, if you have a new whatever, they, then don't, know. they don't know about it. And you don't know what they're doing. So, you know, do a wheel of fortune thing. Kind of scroll through, put your finger on one and go, okay, this is who I'm going to talk to. Thank you so much. You know, haven't talked to you for a while. I wanted to find out what's happening with you. You tell me what's happening. You tell mm -hmm. them what's happening. Okay, great. The third one is the appointment call. And the appointment call is, you know, the last time that we spoke, you said you were looking for X. 
I think I have an introduction for you. I think I have an opportunity for you if it's your particular thing. Can we schedule a time to discuss that if that's still top of mind? Mm. Well, now they've made a soft commitment. All right. And then uh, the fourth is the invitation call. And this is when you say, yay, you told me that you wanted to do this. I'm going to be going to this event while Wednesday. I would love for you to be my plus one. So good. So those are four ways you can follow up without being pushy, sleazy, icky, any of those other things. And then you can always ease in your offer as you text the temperature. You know, like when you do the, the baby bottle on your wrist, kind of see what the temperature is. And you know... Uh I think if we really keep the, this simple and you're consistently doing these four types of calls, like I can envision having an Excel spreadsheet, let, you know, because we want to create processes for this. I see people get overwhelmed. So I can envision, you probably have things for this, um, creating an Excel spreadsheet. I put the name in the first column, call number one, number two, number three, and number four. And in between that, you maybe comment on their post on social media. They get on your email list, so they're keeping up to date. You want to stay top of mind without being ready to buy my thing, ready to buy my thing, ready to buy my thing. <laughs> like, that's the peddler. That's the peddler. And that's why so many people disdain sales because somebody's done that to them. And that's the last thing we want to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. And don't be afraid to give them the scarcity thing. You know, I just wanted to reach out to you because last time we spoke, you said it wasn't the right time. I happen to have two openings. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. And and that's what you can do when you've already got an established relationship is you can go ahead and go to that level quickly in the conversation. Because sometimes I hear people saying, well, if I'm just calling to get to know them, how is it going to turn into a sale? And I know I did that in a whiny voice intentionally. <laughs> um, so let's talk about this for a minute because it's we're going to talk about the energy and the uh, intention and feeling. I call it the music behind you people can always hear what your the the underscore is of the music that you're bringing into a conversation and if it's a, a desperate sales scenario if you bring that I know the times I've done that I got less sales than when I was just easy and relaxed about it mm -hmm. yeah and that's that's the thing you know one of the things that you have to remember in sales I have been in sales technically since high school but um if you talk about my corporate years, well over 45 years, the first thing that I would tell all of the teams I worked with is number one, if you can't laugh at it, don't do it. All <laughs> right. And number two, take your ego out of it. This has nothing to do about whether you're likable or, you know, any of those other things that you inflict on yourself, that mindset has to be completely clear. Completely clear. So what is it that you are doing? I am offering a service. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So if they say no, for whatever reason, make sure that, you know, it's not, oh, I wasn't good enough or whatever. You know, not the, I'm not enough or that I am too, T-O-O, too. I'm too this, too that. No, BS. What you want to find out is what would have made it a yes. Frequently, you will find that, the dog barked when you hit on that particular point, you know, or or something popped up on their screen or something struck them. They just, what I call, they blinked. They blinked and they missed that one particular thing. In which case you don't go, well, you didn't hear me when I said no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> you got to go back to that <laughs> because that's another mistake that people make in conversation, sales conversations is making the customer wrong. You never make them wrong. And, and you know, you, there's nothing in integrity about building yourself up by stepping on the neck of somebody else. Hmm. You don't like it. Why would they like it, really? Okay, so that all goes back to what I was talking about, the listening. What kind of way do they communicate? And so you would then say, you know, perhaps I didn't express it properly. 
And in which case, you know, I always follow my own sort. In which case, I heartily apologize that I didn't communicate that to you properly. But what you just brought up is one of the key points I was hoping to, you know, bring to you. And let me rephrase it and then say it again. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. how you took responsibility. Oh, did you tell me that before? Yeah, didn't you hear me? No. R reframe that into, oh, that did you tell me that before? I didn't hear you say that. Oh. Oh, I, I apologize. It's one really one of the key components of how we can go about getting you what that result that you said you wanted. Like you want to bring it back to the reason you're talking about this is to get them what they want, not about getting you the sale. No, because again, that's how you get to how can we work together or I have someone that I want you to meet. That's how you get to that. And remember, that's what you're looking for because we all prefer to do business with someone we know, like, and trust. So if you get a warm introduction from someone, then that's golden. You know, one person that you treat fairly and you pour into within limits, um, they're going to say, oh, I really, I know someone who needed to hear this. Mm -hmm. You know, You're that's right. not where I'm at right now, but I got somebody for you. Well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the point of relationships. And as we look at this, you know, scheme of the world in which we live with all these different people and interactions, it's how can we work together? Or I know somebody, you know, who needs what you offer. And that only comes about when we take the time to build the relationship. And when you take the time to understand how that person communicates. When I'm working with my people who are fresh out of corporate, they have a tendency to want everybody to know how smart they are. Your client doesn't care. They don't care. Okay. They talk to you about what their pain or their challenge was and what the success would look like. So don't start talking over their head in industry jargon. Mm -hmm. Don't go really, really deep on how you do it talk to them about the results and get them enrolled in, yes, this is the result. Okay, yes, I've been spending my time or my money in the wrong place. Yes, I'd like to have it in that finite period of time. So how can we work together? What will it take? And don't hesitate in making your true offer. Okay, the word discount just makes me itch. You don't do that. You would say, this is how much it is to get that particular result. When I was in tech and I would tell them what it was, you know, uh, what we dealt with in tech and the way I trained my people was, you want the scope of work, what's your successful outcome? You want the time frame, this is how long it's going to take. And you also want to know the budget. Your budget gauge is going to be what have they already tried. If everything mm -hmm. they've tried is free, 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 then you're still going to offer them high, but you got to have your medium and your low prepped. Ooh, this was really good. Did you get that? Your gauge of budget is what they've already tried and be prepared with whatever the high solution is and have other options for them because they may need to work up to spending more money. Yeah, really but you good. always start with the high. And the reason you start with the high is we find the money for the things that are important to us. Okay, ladies, look at the shoes your friends have. You know, it's like, yeah, they know they got other bills to pay, but I had to have this. You know, guys, they had to have that golf club. They had to have whatever. You know, yep. everybody finds the money for the thing that's most important. And people who start out saying, oh, we're struggling and we don't have this and we don't have that will tell me, you know what? I'm going to pull it out of my 401k. I got to get this going. They've, mm -hmm. they've got resources. Don't count your client's money for them. Mm. So good. Um, time is flying, my friend, and I am so excited about all the, the gold that you've poured into us today. I know we're going to have lots and lots of questions, so I'm going to get us ready 
for taking some questions and answers. So if you're on your phone, you're going to hit star six to unmute yourself. If you're on your computer, you'll just hit unmute and raise your hand. So get your questions ready and I'll make all the tech happen in just, uh, happen in just a moment. If you're with us on Facebook, you can put your questions in the comments and I'll make sure to bring them to Dr. Donna. And I know, my friends, that there are people listening in saying, I need her to help me. How can we work together? So that's what you created here today. So uh, let, I'll put a link in the chat, but if you would let everybody know what the, some next steps that they can take with you are. Terrific. I'll keep it really, really simple. Um, you can just send me a text or give me a phone call if that's what's easiest for you. I do answer my phone. I may not get to you right that second, but I will get back to you. My phone number is 240-427-5372. All right. Call or text Donna at 240-427-5372. And I did also just put it in the chat and on the Facebook um, so hopefully that's okay. <laughs> I just put your number. It's up fine. There. It's fine. Um, the way I have my phone system set up after hours doesn't bother me because I'm not good. there. Oh, good. So, I love it. <laughs> I love it. And I want to remind your people, because I've been sipping like crazy, but this is one of the things that I covered with my people before. You have to remember that only yes is yes. Only yes is yes. That's what you take to the bank. All that other stuff doesn't. Wait and see doesn't. Okay. Mm. Only yes is yes. Oh, if you didn't so get a yes. Yeah, it's that's not a sale <laughs> until that happens, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. We're going to go ahead and take some um, questions and comments. I'm in the process of uh, letting people be able to share. And then uh, I want to answer a question that I came, came in from Tanisha. How will the playback be shared? And you can go to our Facebook group for Women's Prosperity Network, and it's in the guides section. So feel free to share it with people you know. Uh, it'll also, in a week or two, all of our Wow Wednesday shows are also on our YouTube channel. So you can go to YouTube. And um, let me also say, if you know you want to have a session with Donna, you can also go to bit.ly forward slash Meet DSB, which stands for Donna Smith Bellinger. So that's all lowercase, all one word, uh, bit.ly forward slash meet DSB. Um, so let's go ahead and take some comments and questions. And I'll start with Tanisha. Good morning. Hey, how are you? Can you hear me? We hear you perfectly. Good morning and welcome to Wild awesome. Wednesday. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Donna. This was really, really good. Like this was like, like uh, uh, two cups of coffee for me. Um, I want to um, get some insight on how to leverage your LinkedIn connections. I have a professional uh, corporate nine to five, but I also have a women's organization and a business. And I felt like my, you know, my Facebook, Instagram was more for my business persona, but my LinkedIn was more for my professional persona. And Nancy, when you opened up, you said that, you know, you and Donna connected via LinkedIn. So I was wondering, if, do you have various LinkedIn um, profiles or like how to leverage? Because it's a different mindset on LinkedIn. So if you mm -hmm. can talk about that, that would be great. You want to take that, Donna? Well, I can. Uh, okay. The one thing that you want to remember is uh, it's, it's pretty one-dimensional. Your objective with any type of connecting that you do is to get them on a call. That's what you really want to do. You want to have a conversation with the decision maker. So how do you influence them to do that? I would use some of the new features on LinkedIn. I would do videos. Mm-hmm. I would uh, let people know what you're looking for. I would use the direct messaging as much as possible so that they feel that you are uh, recognizing them. Hey, I saw a post that you did. 
I, I, I was really interested in it and I gave you a comment, but I'd love to have a conversation around it. That was, that was so good there, my friend, because that's how we connected. It was through a direct message. Mm -hmm. It wasn't nice. just from engaging on each other's posts. Um, no, it's not the scattered, what is it that you used to call it? It's not spray and pray. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, and Tanisha, to your question about different profiles, uh, I have one main profile. I would imagine Donna has that too, but I also have a group. Uh, and a business page on LinkedIn as well. So the first thing you want to find out is, can you use your personal profile um, to talk about the variety of things that you do, or will your employer frown upon that? Yeah, so I'm I'm in banking, and I'm you know I'm in a a certain position, and so that definitely wouldn't align. Because uh, I sit within like the the higher HR business, right. so I don't want to mix the two. So that was just quite you know my quandary of keep. I mean, well, my my stance and keeping them separate. But I find that more of the people that I would love to get to know and talk about what I have to offer from a business perspective are on LinkedIn, and so <laughs> I just didn't know how to broach that. Uh, you have two opportunities. So you can have your personal profile and your business profile. So when you reach out to those people and when you do business related things, do it from your business page. Okay. So, yeah. And uh, if you, if you want to go further on this, if LinkedIn is really your uh, bucket that you want, ponds that you want to play in, uh, Laura Barker, and you can get yes. to information at Barker Business Solutions. She is genius. a mess. genius. Great way to put it. So check out what she has to say um, and the strategies on um, LinkedIn. So go to BarkerBusinessSolutions.com. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. Have an amazing Wednesday. You are most welcome. Thanks for joining us. All right, let's go to our next caller. Phone number is 347-855. Good morning. Your line is open. Hi, good morning. Um, I just my name is Monique Hodge McDaniel, and um I am a independent Mary Kay consultant and I am under Tanisha. And um I was just enjoying the conversation on today and a lot of things that you hit on um was definitely good food on today and um i like the um comment you made about the yes because i always say that uh a no is not always a permanent no you can convert the no into a yes if you use the right strategies yeah. and um the information the information that was given on today was definitely helpful into building your business and i always say you don't want a one-time customer you want a lasting customer and you want to build a relationship because most successful businesses run on a good relationship. You yeah. don't want, you want to build relationships and um, connections with people, not just sell products. And being that I come from a retail um, background um, for quite a few years, and also with teaching, I know relationships can last many years. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that's on the call on today. And thank you for the um, information. You are quite welcome. Thank you. You know, and that uh, really two seconds quick. When you're able to tell them what you do and not how you do it. So if someone says, "Well, Donna, what do you do?" I will say, "People pay me. People pay me to help them to get more clients, sell more to their existing clients, and increase their referrals." Short. Sure. That leads to, how do you do that? Well, we can have a conversation regarding which of these is your challenge. Ooh, everybody, you, did you hear that? I, the introduction piece of saying people pay me to blah, 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 changes. Or hire me. Or... Oh, so good. <laughs> uh, I am so glad that you were be with us today, as I know our callers and our listeners are as well. Uh, let me go to our next caller. Thank you for joining us. Uh, our last caller, who's, I didn't catch your name, and I'm sorry, what was your name? 
I'm Winnie Hodge McDaniel. Winnie Hodge McDaniel. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. So thank you for, for joining us today. I'm so glad you're here. And now I'm going to go to Tanya Slater. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for having me today. Um, Ms. Donna, my question is, I am an eco-friendly architectural and interior designer. And I relaunched my business um, this year. And, Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So um, I guess, you know, I'm a little bit old school when it comes to the whole marketing. And I am not, um, I am very familiar with the new social media marketing, but I catch myself um, not wanting to do some of it. You no, know, as far as like, um, you know, constantly having to do the reels, constantly having to do the videos. But I do have my marketing team that is working with me and, and helping me with uh, marketing my business and being very strategic in it. But I tend to still find myself um, with a little resistance. And what would you suggest or how would you suggest my overcoming that because when I am face to face with people I'm, I'm you know individually I am I'm comfortable about talking about what I what my services are but maybe I I think that after speaking with you maybe I need to make some tweaks in my verbiage and my mm -hmm. articulation of that because you know I feel like um Maybe I'm either giving too much information or maybe I'm giving conflicting information on my services. What would you recommend I do to be more successful in the way I present my services and who I am and what I represent? Are you presenting the challenges that you resolve? Do you um, have a list of like frequently asked questions? Or, or the frequent types of projects that you work on. Because then you have a really broad spectrum yeah. that you could work in, but I'm sure that you have narrowed that down. Yeah. So speak to your successes in those specific areas and also niche down where you're doing your marketing. And last, create a list of the people that you would love to do business with and put your people on getting you in front of those people. We, you we've done everybody. Right, right. We've done the narrowing down part <laughs> of, of the, the specific clientele. Um, we, 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 are, we have been working on that. Um, so I think I missed something that you just said. Well, well in the, I think your question was, twofold how do you overcome some of the resistance that you have about putting yes. yourself out there on social media mm -hmm. and the suggestion that i heard from donna was make the reels or the posts it doesn't even have to be video all the time you can right. work your way into that make the content you share about the problems you solve make right. the content you share some of your testimonials that she was just talking about. Right. Okay. And that can and do help. more podcasts. Guest. Yep. Get yeah. on podcasts. Get on podcasts for the industry. You want to okay. show up where your ideal client shows up. Right. Okay. Yeah. And 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 the key for doing that marketing and growing your visibility is to get more conversations happening right that's why we want to do marketing is to create more conversations right so may i ask one more question um, yeah and then i'm gonna go to our next caller we got yeah. lots of people in queue today so I, I i understand you're saying doing the more podcasts and stuff how do i how do or what would you recommend i do to overcome the it, I don't necessarily know that it's a fear. It's like, I feel like my energy is being zapped from me whenever I do uh, the, the videos and I'm actually, cause I enjoy talking to people, but how, how would you recommend I overcome 
or, or regain the energy to be able to do this in, in a more of a longer period versus the short period and then stop. Does I think make- I would love to have a conversation with you, Tanya. Please get on my calendar. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Um, let's go. Let me remind everyone. So thank you, Tanya, for your honesty um, and you know, experience sharing what you're experiencing because you're not the only one. I go through mm-hmm. that at times as well, as right. do many, many people. And there's I, I love that you said let's have a conversation because there's so many factors that could be at play. Mm-hmm. And for Donna to really serve you well. Come- is, a, is a, a good move. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. it. My yeah, pleasure. So two different ways that you can um, get with Donna. Number one is to call or text 240-427. Uh, so 240-427-5372. And a little yes. hint. When you're reading a phone number, read it as and imagine in your mind you're writing it and then you should be at a good speed for people to be able to write it down. So 240-427-5372. Or you can directly book a call with her by going to bit.ly forward slash meet DSB. Um, so good. There you go. You got it in the chat again. So thank you, Tanya. Thank you. And I do have it written down, by the way. Awesome. Good job. <laughs> All right, let's go to our next caller, area code 561542. Good morning. Your line is open. Are you there? 561. Hi. There we Hi. go. Good yeah. morning. Hi, it's Judy Herman. Very interesting conversation. Um, I work with people who are concerned about their cognitive ability and not being as sharp as they used to be. For, and hold on one second. Are, what, hold on one second. What did you say your name was? Judy? Judy Herman. Oh, That's yes, Judy. And, and I'm going to invite you to take on what Donna said. People pay me to, instead of I work with people, people pay me to. Yes. <laughs> I loved yes. that. Yes, that's excellent. And also what she was saying is something that um, I already do, which is learn how they are communicating, whether it's the visual kind of thing or whether they're hearing me or whether they like to do things uh, kinesthetically. So that is something that I think is so important to be aware of when you're speaking with uh, clients or potential clients. Um, you really do want to hear in their voice what it is that they want because then you can come back to them in a way that they will understand. Mm-hmm. So that, that was very, very helpful. I appreciated that. Awesome. Did you have a question this morning? Um, I have a question mainly in how to engage the right people for my services Mm. because a lot of times the actual client is not the person who hires and pays me. Uh, It may be a loved one. It may be, um, you know, someone that they see is having some difficulty and rather than that person engaging me, it is the, uh, not necessarily caregiver, but the person who is concerned Mm-hmm. is hiring me got it got it and that happens a lot like if you work with um children or teenagers they're not the ones paying you it's the parents paying you or the school that's going to bring you in so donna what suggestions do you have around that i typically would say something like you know i'm very very passionate about supporting people who have cognitive issues and the people who hire me to serve those people that they care about blah 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 yeah, yeah, beautiful. And right. and the other the other thing I would add into that, so two things I heard. One is on your engagement strategy and marketing uh, content, you want to speak mostly to the problems and the feelings that the people who pay you have around the person they're caring for. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessarily about 
you know, my, you know, my mother has uh, Alzheimer's or is terminally ill or whatever that you're not going to talk about how you change that the patient, let's call it, you talk about the pain the child feels watching their mother deteriorate. Right. So you want to do that on your social media. And then the second thing I would say is to remember what Donna talked about today on those four connection calls, because what you want to get to is being in enough conversations and having those four introduction, reintroduction, number three was appointment. I got it. I got it. Number four is invitation. <laughs> I was like, I remembered. You want to have yeah. those four conversations so that you get to how can we work together or I know somebody. And if, right. if right. your goal is every single phone call is going to be a potential sale, you're cutting yourself short. Yeah. Now, the other thing is when you're speaking to those caregivers, children, whatever, um, but get clear on what they feel the desired outcome would be so that you can manage their expectations and get them to verbalize what the benefit would be for them. So would this give right. you less stress caring with for your parent? Would it give you more free time? You know, whatever. So that yeah. they can see the benefit for them, even if you can't directly affect the condition. Okay? Right. Right. Really That's good. very important important in my one-on-one. I'm also about to do some of the sales conversations with activities directors at communities. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a big one also, how I can, you know, finally break through and get into some of these communities that I've been in touch with for uh, some of them years. And they So again, you know, yeah. again, what's the benefit to the HR director or activities director at the center to the work. Right. You do. It's not just right. about the patients. You got to go to how does this help them do their jobs right. or touch their hearts? Right. Yeah. Right. Good Excellent. stuff. I'm so glad well, you're good. here. I've got, a, I've got enthusiasm now, Donna, to go and make those calls to those activities directors. I woke up this morning and I wasn't that excited about it, but now I am. So great. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for being with us today and be sure to reach out to Donna. You can either text her at 240-427-5372 or uh, go directly to bit.ly forward slash meet DSB. And we have time for one more quick question before we wrap up today. Uh, so let's go to area code 954-467. Your line is open. No, it's not that. 954-673. <laughs> Who's that calling in? Hi, it's Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome. Great show. Super great show and great guest. And I have written down Donna's telephone number. Awesome. Good for you. And I make money by providing bookkeeping services to small businesses all over the country. Mm -hmm. And I have a problem with my friends and family saying, can you do my books? And then I give them this super low rate. And then I feel guilty and I just did it for a friend and now I'm like, don't want to do the work. So is there a delicate way to revisit the conversation? (laughs) Yes, there is a very delicate way to uh, revisit. Remind them that you are a business owner. Okay. And, and I would start Mm -hmm. with, if you were to introduce me to someone, what is, what is it you say I do? Well, you're a bookkeeper. Okay. And who do you think I I keep books for? Well, you keep books for companies. Yeah. And I get paid for that. Mm -hmm. And so my rate is X. Now, if that's a little bit heavy lifting for you, I'm happy to give you terms. Okay. Okay. But you must stand firm in the value of your time. And if they don't want to pay you, that's one you donate Donate them to another bookkeeper. Ah. Okay. 
okay? Because if that's a family <laughs> member that you're not really crazy about, <laughs> you know, I'm at capacity. Okay. I can't do this right now. And I know that you okay. need to get it done. Let mm -hmm. me give you, you know, someone who I trust. That was good. Okay. That was yeah. good. And, you know, Elizabeth, the other thing, depending upon who they are in your life, those can be sometimes challenging conversations. So I recognize that. Um, you may want to, you know, if it's somebody who believes in you and wants to see you be successful, you could also say something like, um, I just, you know, I just started, I just worked on my projections, my budget and my plans for the remainder of this year in 2023. And I've got a new business advisor I'm working with. And in order for me to hit my objectives and all the goals that we've got set in place, my rate for the service I quoted you is X. So I just want you to know that if you haven't taken the money from them yet, say, I apologize, but it's not going to fit within the parameters of the, the the budgeting and the plans that I've sent out. So if you've already taken right. the money, just make it. No, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I just agreed to a price. And then I'm like, I really don't want to do this work at this low rate. It's yeah. a gift to exactly. them and paying for me. Yeah. Yeah. So I love the donate concept. So just make sure you have yeah. some partnerships with people that would take it on. Um, and or I don't do work with family and friends. I've seen that it creates challenges. In new goal. Yeah, I think that's going to be my new goal in 2023 because every time it happens, I just, yeah, <laughs> it's unbelievable how much it doesn't make me feel good. The relationship is more important than the money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's okay. Okay. I love you so okay. much. I can't possibly work with you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Very helpful. Awesome. Good, okay. good. Bye-bye. Bye. So glad you were with us today. Dr. Donna, you rock the house. Thank you for being our guest for Wow Wednesday and pouring into us in such a powerful way. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I love being of service. Yeah, and you certainly were. So thank you again for being with us. Thank you to all our listeners. Uh, be sure to share this because this conversation is one every single business owner, employee, contractor, leader needs to hear to move beyond so that not only can you be earning more money, you can be serving more people in a powerful way. So get out there, share this, keep on joining us on Wow Wednesday and check us out at womensprosperitynetwork.com for all of the resources tools and opportunities to connect and collaborate that we provide just for you. So we'll see you again next week. Until then, get out there and be the one who brings a smile to someone else's face today. Have a good day, everyone. Bye, Donna. Bye. Thank you all so much. Awesome. Awesome.